That was just fascinating, Alka, and uh, it's just um, I've had the opportunity and the privilege of going through your book, <coughs> and there's a lot of detailed study. I think um, the starting point of this conversation needs to be uh, you ended by saying, uh, and you made the case. Um, so did Dev that earlier about how Indian culture, mythology, religions, even have been inclusive and have allowed for diversity in. Um, and gender fluidity why did we lose that i just take your mic yeah um i don't know i think like many of many people who believe like me i think we lost it out to the victorian prudery a lot also i wouldn't like to blame the you know it's very easily said that we lost it out to the Mughals, no, or the Muslims, not at all, because the maximum number of pleasure albums were created during the Mughal period. I mean, I call it Mughal India or Islamic India, right from the uh, 8th century onwards. They were great pleasure seekers. They were hedons of the first order. And uh, a lot of poetry which was written in the colonial period also talks of the fact, look at the boy across the border with the bottom like a peach. And uh, 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 there were stories of, you know, having gay uh, lovers and it was called Nawabi Shok. So you see, it was all very inclusive. I think somehow, maybe it was with the colonial prudery that we had when you talk of Michel Foucault and you have piano legs being yeah, covered yeah. with, nap you know, with this thing, sandwiches not being served. They were always covered with cloth. So I think it has something to do with, you know, our colonial. A and that impact over the decades and over generations, across generations, would you say that that has sort of um, impacted the so-called middle class the most? Because look at the well, imagery the that you yeah. shared. Uh, you had this lady photographer, um, uh, you know, sort of the lady who, the photographer who, um, not photographer, the woman in Bangalore mm. who was dressed up uh, in male mm. of the right? Yeah. 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 So um, this is, this exploration, the practice of gender fluidity via rituals and customs in your presentation seems mm. to be quite uh, vibrant and uh, robust. Well, you know, in the non-middle class, yeah. But you know, the middle class, as Bertrand, uh, as Bernard Shaw said, morality is always with the middle classes, the very rich and the economically backward. They live on their terms. They really don't need to bother. So that is one thing I believe in. Um, as Napoleon said, "I am the protocol." So they make their protocols. When you're too rich, you don't care a damn, and when you're too poor, you never care a damn. In so any are case, are you saying that uh, the the poorer people in India have been more inclusive? I think so, because the way they live within communities. See, unfortunately for us, we can't cut out caste. That is why you'll see there's no merit in India. You're somebody's son, you're somebody's daughter. We don't have meritocracy in India. And caste plays a very important role. But in the margins of society, it is Varna more than caste. So you can change Varna. But caste is very much part of this awful Brahmanical middle class kind of, you know, silos that we have built for ourselves. So I think the middle class really needs to pull up their socks and, you know, get out of their, you know, silos and, and be more experimental. Not, yeah. So, um... Uh, we saw the landmark Supreme Court judgment, right, um, that, that has made these festivals, these conversations, not just, uh, uh, you know, move these conversations out into the open mainstream. Uh, do you think that, uh, what kind of role do you think that will play in helping people uh, really embrace uh, the concept of Ardhanareshwari, the concept of gender fluidity and the, and the fact that male, female can reside in the same person? You're talking of festivals and conferences like no, this? I'm, I'm or saying, the, I'm uh, saying the, 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 the Supreme Court Supreme judgment Court. and the impact it's had on this conversation. I think what is more important is acceptance, acceptance, because, uh, and knowledge, it's not just a Supreme Court judgment, how do you take away the uh, conditioning of the mind? 
फॉर सो मेनी ईयर्स ये तो पाप है yeah. अरे, अरे But... इसकी शादी कर दो ये ठीक हो जाएगा यू नो वो ठीक नहीं होता इट्स अ कंडीशन आई हैव स्पोकन व्हेन आई वाज डूइंग माय रिसर्च आई स्पोक टू साइकोलॉजिस्ट आई स्पोक टू डॉक्टर्स आई स्पोक टू कोठीज आई स्पोक टू अलीज आई स्पोक टू लॉट्स ऑफ पीपल एंड इट इट इज एक्चुअली यू आर बोर्न विद इट सो व्हाट इज इंपॉर्टेंट इज टू अंडरस्टैंड to accept because many parents also do not accept and it is really tough it is tough for the person because you can't keep leading a fake life yeah. you have to have the courage to literally come out as they say and i think it is very important for each one of us to be accepting of each other do you think acceptance will be easier uh, will be more widespread because of the legal mandate that's come in i don't think to me i don't think legality has anything to do with the social relationships legality matters that they will not be taken to jail if they get married that's a different thing but legality is of no consequence to how we behave with each other this comes from us within it comes from our culture it comes from the society it comes from enlightenment uh parvati how are we doing for time should i slip in a couple more questions <laughs> okay um what prompted you to undertake the study of the ardhnareshwari uh because um i think it began with you seeing the form in art and being curious about the depiction and art isn't it uh so just tell us a little bit about how that how the study started well you know this is a really uh, interesting question for me because i believe now that i'm much older i think everything is destiny i'm sorry i'm going to sound like a dinosaur <laughs> but i think this was meant to be because when i was doing wanting to do my phd and this is many many years ago and i was all of 26 seems like a lifetime away i wanted you know i was young and arrogant and i wanted to create something new to the world that nobody had done before so i went to my supervisor and i said i want to do something which nobody will do so you know he was a very uh, mature very uh, enlightened very good very this thing man he said you know shivarama murthy had done work on nataraj in indian art thought and literature and there is a particular image which people will not really look at and do because it's you know it's a bit bold so i had the arrogance of youth maybe i would not be so bold now because as you grow older there are many grays at that time there's only black and white my father was a big devi bhakt and i did not know so much about shiva but then i said oh this is my only way of creating a new trajectory for myself is to take something which nobody has done before but that was the best thing that happened in my life because not only did it teach me not only did i do something new which was very good but you see what it really taught me which really helps me a lot in my life is the gender balance because when i studied shiva the primordial god and then i studied shakti which is the adi shakti to which even shiva bows down to i don't need to be aggressive about being feminine i celebrate femininity not feminism i eulogize masculinity not aggressive patriarchy so i've really understood what it is to live in a balanced inclusive world thanks to my work thank you alka i think on that note i'm going to hand it back to parvati